This is my DIY 3D printed pill dispenser. I've been working on it for about three years off and on, and I made it because all the commercially available pill dispensers are way too expensive. And it does exactly what it says on the tin. When you give it a schedule, it dispenses whatever pills you put in it. And it works pretty darn well. So I'm gonna show you how you can make your own after this message from my sponsor. JLC PCB. With 19 years of experience and 5 state of the art factories, it's no wonder that over 5.4 million engineers across 180 plus countries rely on their reliable and affordable services. Getting started is easy. Simply upload your Gerber files, get an instant quote, and place your order within minutes. It's just that easy. Whether you're prototyping or producing in volume, JLC PCB offers unbeatable pricing, with 1 to 8 layer PCBs starting from just $2. But it's not just affordability. JLC PCB delivers premium quality with lightning turnaround times. Your boards can be ready within as little as 24 hours. All thanks to their fully in-house production process, which ensures quality control at every stage. And right now, there's an exclusive offer where you can get 6 layer PCBs for just $5 with $30 off of your first order. If you're ready to take your electronic projects to the next level, visit JLC PCB. This is everything you need to build your own pill dispenser. It might seem like a lot, but it really isn't. These are all the 3D printed parts, and this is all the electronics and mounting hardware you need to assemble it. Some of it is pretty generic, so you might already have it. All of the files and schematics are available on my Patreon store, and if you've bought the previous version, you should be able to just download the file again, and you'll have all of the updated stuff. And also, also, if you support me on the 12 volt tier, you'll get this for free, which you'll notice is a nice little discount. So let's start assembling it. Specifically, I'm building a pill dispenser that dispenses two pills. So I have uh, two containers for pills. But we're gonna start with the base version, which just handles one. So for the base version, we need the base and we need one of these. So we're gonna move all the other bits aside there. So these are all the bits you need to build a single pill dispenser. Uh, let's move that aside for a second. Let's begin with the base. We're going to need the actual base piece and this little piezo's vibration drop sensor. This is the actual thing that detects whether a pill has been dispensed. My one comes in this little plastic container, but uh, we don't actually need that. We just need the bare piezo's module itself. So uh, let's rip this apart. You can get these without the enclosure, but when I got them, I thought, oh, the enclosure would be useful. It isn't, you don't need it. Now, I'm actually gonna swap these wires. They're not quite long enough, and I don't wanna just extend them. I'd rather fully swap them. So uh, let me grab my soldering iron. Do be careful when you do this yourself. The, uh, the, the, the film on here is super thin, and you have to solder directly to it. And uh, with just the tiniest bit of heat, it likes to just vanish. So uh, be very careful when you do this. If you don't feel confident doing it, just try extending the wires and you should be good. Now that we've got that done, we need the tiniest bit of double-sided tape right on the back of the uh, piezos module. There. Now you want to take those wires and uh, feed them through the hole that is at the bottom of the base and they should pop out around the, uh, the back side. You might need a pair of tweezers just to uh, grab them out of the hole like so. We want to get that sensor so that it covers up that hole there and just uh, stick it down. And that there should be perfect so we can now put the cap in and that sits perfectly on top of the sensor. So now we can move on to assembling a container. What we need is a container. We need a shield. Now the shields I provide a blank for and you will need a little bit of CAD knowledge because you have to design these for the individual pills that you're using. Uh, I like to just model the pills and then basically just cut out the, uh, the shape out of the, uh, the blank for these and then, you know, add a little bit of a lip so that it actually catches them. But that's about it. It's not too difficult, but you need a little bit of know-how. And that will fit in there after we uh, put the motor in. Speaking of the motor, we also want to uh, solder on two wires to it. So uh, let's quickly do that. The length of these wires will vary depending on uh, how high up the stack it is. But because this one's at the first one, we don't actually need that much wire, about that much, and even that's pretty generous. 
and now the motor just uh, fits in here and then we have a motor mount that goes around the motor there and make sure that the motor is nice and snug and we're just gonna uh, screw it in with some self-tapping screws you want to make sure your screws aren't too long and they're not coming out through the front here uh, if they are you might have to get shorter screws or just drive them out a little bit now for the wires I've got a nice little channel here to uh, put the wires into to keep them out of the way of the pills being dispensed at the back and again you might need a pair of tweezers to grab them now on the inside we want to put in our little shield it should go in there and uh, orient it that fits in very nice and snugly you want to make sure it's seated well on the shaft of the motor but not uh, deep enough so that it scrapes on the the bottom of the container uh, that is perfect this motor does not sound healthy I did get these motors like second hand used so uh, some of them are not great but it is a good way to save money now we want to get our uh, two M3 nuts and screws if we just undo the nuts from the screws and we want to put the nuts into the holes that are designed for them and they should fit in pretty well there uh, the fit is a little loose so you might want to hold them in once while screwing them in and then here we just need to uh, put a screw in the side make sure it goes all the way through and just screw it in making sure that it uh, grabs on properly like so and now we can do the other side the angle of these containers is adjustable because depending on the pill you might have to uh, tilt it up slightly or tilt it down slightly so uh, that's by design uh, so you don't want to tighten these all the way yet uh, make sure it works the way you need it to work with the pills and then you can tighten them down and the only thing left on this container is to add this little lid here that goes there uh, in the previous version the container printed with this lid but that needed extra support so uh, I just removed it so that it no longer needs that and the way I choose to uh, add this to the container is just with a little bit of heat welding uh, I just uh, tack it a little bit like that I should have cleaned my soldering iron, now I've got a stain on it. But yeah, just a little bit of heat, melt the plastic together, and that won't be going anywhere anytime soon. That is how you make a pill dispenser for one pill. Uh, obviously you will need to make the electronics, but we'll get to them later. Now I want to make the extension, which is the exact same process as making this container, but on an extension piece that attaches to this with some zip ties. I pretty much just went with zip ties because it's uh, a really easy way of uh, adding extra bits on here without needing to reprint the whole thing, like so. So that's one zip tie, second zip tie, and that is the third zip tie. And now we can just uh, cut those off. They do stick out quite a bit. You could put them on the inside, but uh, I like the zip tie look, so I'm keeping them on the outside. And now we can make the exact same container as we did for the first one, but with the second one. Because this motor is a little bit higher up, you want to make sure you give it a little bit more wire. And again, just screw in the mount. And again, we can just put the shield in here, making sure it's orientated correctly with the motor shaft. It is keyed, so do be mindful of that. And again, pushing it down enough so that it's firmly on there, but not enough so that it scrapes the bottom of the container. And again, we can screw this on to here. And the last thing is that little front lid. This time I've cleaned my soldering iron. Never mind, it's still dirty. Now with the uh, the main part assembled, we can move on to the uh, actual electronics. Uh, I'm gonna start with just uh, cleaning up these wires a little bit and adding connectors to them. So this is the uh, piezos wire. I'm gonna trim that down a little bit about there and I'm gonna add a connector. And I'm gonna add a tiny amount of uh, heat ring tubing just to make sure it's uh, nice and neat and doesn't short circuit. I don't have any fancy connectors, I'm just using these uh, male and female DuPont connectors and attaching those to the individual parts. To make sure that I don't plug things into the wrong ports, I'm actually using the uh, male connector on the piezos uh, drop sensor and a female connector on the motors. 
Now we can set that aside and focus on the uh, electronics that will make it do the things we want it to do. Number one, we are using a tiny RTC. This is a real-time clock. Uh, it basically just helps the microcontroller keep time very accurately. Uh, I used to do this by just uh, reaching out to the network through the NTP protocol and just asking for the time. But because I used to do that every minute, uh, that would just gank up your network. So instead, I'm uh, using an RTC so that I no longer have to do that. Uh, I'm using a motor driver for uh, actual driving of the motors. Now, specifically, this motor driver is a DRV8833, uh, which is a H-Bridge two-motor uh, motor driver, uh, which means it can drive two motors in both directions. But if you don't actually need to drive both motors in both directions. You can actually plug four motors up to this, which is what I'm doing, because the pill dispenser only needs the motors to go in one direction. So with just one motor driver, you can actually have a four pill dispenser, uh, which is the maximum amount that I support per unit. And to make the actual piezo drop sensor work with a microcontroller, we need two resistors. Uh, one of them is a 1M ohm resistor and the other is a 10K resistor. This basically just helps the microcontroller figure out what the analog value is of the uh, drop sensor so that it can actually sense when something drops onto it. And for the microcontroller, I'm using this uh, DF Robot ESP32C3 Beetle. Gosh, that's a name. Uh, for no other reason than I have it and uh, I like it. To make the assembly go by a little bit faster, I made this little circuit board, which holds the uh, real-time clock, the microcontroller, and the motor driver, and the two resistors are already soldered on there as well. And like I said, the schematics for this are available with the 3D models, so now all I have to do is just plug it in. So the piezos goes there, and then we've got motor one, and motor two. And now we should be able to just plug the microcontroller into my PC and upload some code. Now, I'm not actually going to walk you through on how to install the Arduino code on the ESP32. Uh, I've got a pretty extensive list of instructions over on GitHub, at the end of which you should end up with this, which is the web interface for the pill dispenser. And I've put in a lot of time into making this interface intuitive. And as you can tell, it looks good. I know, right? So first, let's open the settings and over here, we've got a button that says set RTC and that sets the time on the RTC to whatever your local time is. It gets that through an NTP request. So you can see down here, we're printing out the live time from the RTC and the nice little party trick is that you can actually pull it out and it will uh, stop printing out the time. Well, it's trying to, but obviously it doesn't have the RTC, so it doesn't know what to print. But then if we plug it back in, it should start printing again. Fantastic. Uh, so that works perfectly. We also have dark mode and it will actually save your preference to light mode or dark mode. I'm gonna leave it on dark mode there. And now we have the four containers. A pill dispenser has a, only supports a maximum of four containers. It's mostly because the, the amount of time it takes from the pill to drop from the container on top to the bottom. And also, you know, with the motor driver, it's just a convenient number. So we only support four containers. If we click settings over here, we can test the motor. We can set the speed of the motor and we can set the trigger threshold. So depending on what kind of pills you have and the vibrations that the motors cause, uh, you might want to adjust the uh, the number on which it triggers the motor. So uh, if I click that, that spins the motor. Uh, I, I don't actually have anything in there. So if I just go like that, it will stop it. And if I, for example, set the speed higher, it will go much faster and it will also be a lot louder. We can also set the uh, the trigger point a little bit higher. And if I uh, do that, it takes, it takes quite a lot of knocking. So if I set that back down to where I usually have it, which is, I think around 400 is a pretty good base note. Although the piezo's uh, drop sensor is actually a lot better than the vibration sensor I used to use before. Before I used to have a lot of issues with the uh, servos actually triggering the vibration sensor. It's really not the case with this one. It's, it's surprisingly 
uh, not sensitive to the vibrations of the motors I'm using. But uh, yeah, yeah, I, I said around 400, which seems to be pretty decent. And the speed will depend on uh, your uh, motor's RPM. So with some of them, you might want to go faster. With some of them, you might want to go slower. I, I stick it around 80 and then I click save. And you do actually have to adjust the settings per container. If you set up a schedule, but don't actually uh, adjust the settings and save, it won't know at what speed to run the motor and it just won't actually run that schedule. So make sure you adjust the settings and click save. So now we can actually add a schedule. Uh, and here we can select what days it dispenses the pills on. Uh, you can also set every day and the amount of pills. Uh, if you just do, if you want three of the same pills, every day, uh, leave the times exactly the same, but if you want them to be at different times, uh, you know, just change the times and it will dispense one pill at those times. Uh, if I add that, as you can see, it will now dispense on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I should really just have that say every day if it's all of the days, but whatever. Uh, and it will dispense three pills at eight, nine, and 10. We can also have multiple schedules per container. So if I say every uh, Tuesday, I want an extra pill at 8 a.m., it will now dispense uh, two pills at 8 a.m., but only on Tuesday. If you wanna adjust any of the schedules, we have a little cog icon next to the uh, schedule and you can edit it. But, so you can change what days. Uh, you can also just delete it. Easy as that. Uh, and obviously you can do that for all of the uh, containers. So uh, I'm gonna put some pills in my containers and we'll uh, set up a schedule. So I'm using some multivitamins in the top one. Like that. And some high strength uh, omega freeze. Apparently it's good for your brain. I'm still waiting for the uh, benefits. Like so. And I'm now gonna just quickly run a test. If I click test, perfect. And uh, we're gonna save that because that worked. And the second motor, perfect. I, I cannot explain how happy I am with this working the way it does. It took a lot of time to get it to this and it's just so good. I'm so happy with this and the web interface. So, I'm just very happy, okay? Let me actually set this up with the schedule that I needed at. So I've set up my schedule and it should dispense in about eh, five-ish minutes. So meanwhile, uh, if I go to uh, get schedule, uh, because I'm using JSON on the back end, it actually just tells you in JSON format um, what days and, uh, and what time it will dispense. It's actually just like a good thing to check just in case, uh, just to make sure everything's working properly. And then in uh, get settings, we actually have the motor speed and the threshold we want it to go off at and also the theme. So if I, for example, open this page in a different browser, it will actually load in all of my presets. So it knows I like dark mode and I've got the schedule loaded in here as well. So we know that works. So now let's uh, give it a few minutes and wait for it to actually dispense. Perfect. And with that, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, support me on Patreon if you can, purchase yourself a pill dispenser, and I'll see you on next week's live stream. Goodbye.